Hello everyone, I have been talking to a friend of mine and uh, he gave me a great idea for a new video series uh, because I was kind of wondering what I should upload because uh, just it seemed that my channel was appealing more to gaming than it was just programming. So I thought it we thought it'd be really cool to be able to do something where we mix the two. So we take a popular game and uh, we look at the code, break it down, and uh, we kind of explain what's going on behind the scenes. So I thought I'd start off with uh, Zombies from Call of Duty World at War, since that is already a popular series on my channel. And what I've done is I've gone through the source code um, through the PC version, and I've taken out key uh, pieces of code that I found very interesting that would be um, pretty, well, pretty useful and pretty cool to know about the zombie engine. Now, this generally also applies to... Call of Duty Black Ops and Black Ops 2 because they don't typically change the engine too much. So these offsets, they might they might be changed a little bit, but the, they will generally remain um, fairly constant. So here we're going to start off with the init function. Now this function has some interesting things as it defines some parameters for us. So we find that um, insta-kill, that's default set to zero as soon as the game starts. That's, uh, that's an obvious. The point scalar, so that's just basically the multiplier and that's just set to one. Now the interesting stuff is down uh, down here. We find that the um, the power ups are set to last for thirty seconds. So you know the double points and insta kill they're both set to uh, thirty seconds. Now these are interesting as well because these state how often the power ups actually drop, and this states that only four power ups can drop per round, and it increments by two thousand. Now I'm not sure what the percentage system they're using is. I don't know how. 2000 is defined what unit it is. I couldn't seem to find it, but I still thought it'd be interesting nonetheless. Now, the other, another interesting thing is the level variables that are set when the player spawns in. Now, these two variables up here, these are really interesting because, as you can see in the comment, default to not zombify the player till further support, which means that they could have had something similar to, uh, they could have had something similar to Infected in Call of Duty World at War, where the player could be zombified, essentially, um, or what is it from Black Ops 2 Turned, I believe, is the name, the name of the game mode, where they started working that in, in that in World at War. And then we also see um, the, inter the intermission times, the between round times, etc., etc. Uh, the health increases and their percentages, so 10%. And... This is also of interest down here. So you, zombie score starts. So we know we start off with 500 points. For every kill, we get 50 points. For every damage uh, inflicted on the, the zombie, every shot is 5 points. Now a melee, as we can see, melee maximizes the bonus. So you get a bonus on top of your kill and damage. So melee gives you an 80 point bonus a headshot gives you a 50 point bonus neck gives you 20 and torso or burns give you a 10 point bonus now these are pretty useful to know even if you're playing the game if you want to know how to maximize your points well it's right here in the code how it's done this is the these are the bonuses and this is how you can apply them now here we also have penalties now we know that if we go down or if anybody on our team goes down we lose a certain amount of points now, it seems that when somebody goes down, um, you lose 5% of your points. Now, there is a cap on this. So if you have like 100,000 points, you know, you're not going to lose 5,000 points. That's not how it's going to work. But, yeah. And if you do not revive that player and they die, you lose 10% of your points. Now, this is where we kind of see how there's a cap. Um, we'll see that in a second. Now, the round spawning, this is interesting as well, because it basically shows how if the round number is above three, um, we will start to see that they, they will sprint. So before round three, we'll never have sprinters. Now, this can be observed from the game, um, but I thought this would be interesting as this can kind of confirm it as this is actually in the game's code. AI calculate health. This is interesting, too, because it's it even states in the comment that after round 10, um, the zombies get expon like mathematically they get exponentially harder, which means that the health of the zombies is the current health that they are at multiplied by the increased percentage, which I believe was set to uh, 
Yeah, 10. So they will increase 10% or time. Yeah, they will increase 10% every round after 10, which I thought was, was pretty interesting. And, uh, well, that's exponentially, by the way. So you're multiplying that by the health where if it's above round one, so if it's between, if it's round two to round nine, then the health on the zombies will just be added. So it will go up to a hundred percent, in which case at round, uh, at round nine, you have a hundred percent. And at round 10, you would have 110% essentially round think. This method is also very interesting. Uh, these comments are just kind of there. Uh, it's fun to read the comments sometimes. There's some interesting things in there. Uh, but the match reward, this is interesting. Now, if you've played zombies enough, you will realize that if you rebuild a barrier, like say we leave a crawler at the end of the round and we go around and repair a bunch of barriers, there will be a point where you will cease to uh, gain points. And this is because of this little piece of code right here. And this basically states that the maximum number of points you can get from barriers is 50 multiplied by the round number. So if you have, um, well, let's say it's round one, the maximum number of points you will be able to get is 50 points. If you're on round two, the maximum you'll be able to get is 100 points and etc. Now there is a cap on this. If the reward is above 100, it'll just cap out at 500, or sorry, above 500, it will cap out at 500. So basically, even if you're round, on round 50 um, and you go around repairing barriers, you're still only going to be able to accumulate 500 points from doing so. Okay, so that's for that. Now, there's some other interesting stuff in this function, but I'm not going to go too far into it because that's more for the um, interfacing. Now, the revive monitor, this is also interesting, and this shows where that cap was. So earlier on, I believe it was right, yeah, right about there. Anyways, it said that we lost 10% of our points if they died, or 5% of their points if they went down. Now, this is where the cap is. This uses this function to get it. So even if this is set to 5,000, let's say you had you know, the player player went down, you got them up, um, and you had 100,000 points. So you would have lost 5,000 points, except for this little check right here. This checks if the points lost is above 300. Let's not let's not be too mean here. You know, let's let's only take away 300 points. Now this also says that the person who revives that player will regain these points that is that was taken from them when they went down, as we can see as if is defined reviver. Now, this is one of the most interesting functions, and I think this is the most useful function for gamers as well. This shows the waiting for the ray gun. Uh, now, this was on, I can only find this on uh, Deer Reach. I couldn't find this on uh, any other map, but uh, it's very interesting because the only way that the ray gun is set to a waiting so that it can't be overpowered so that too many players can't get it. Now, we notice that at 12 pulls after a ray gun, so basically after every 12 hits of somebody not getting a ray gun, the percentage increases, well, as defined by the comment, to 15%. So the more hits the box gets, you get a higher percentage up to 15%. After 8 pulls, so between 8 box hits and 12 box hits, you will get a 10% increase, not a 15%, because that only comes after 12 box hits. Now, what I find very peculiar about this is we can see here that we're taking the integer, the number to add, um, and the number of s the size of the array of how many weapons we're including, and we're multiplying, multiplying it by 0 0.1. But that's interesting, because if you multiply anything by 0 0.1, that is 10%, and it says 15% in the comment, and down here it says 10%, and you're multiplying it by 0 0.05, which would be 5%. So maybe they got the comments wrong, maybe it's meant that after 8 uh, box hits, it only it increases to 5%, and after 12, it increases to 10%, or maybe they have a different system going on in their uh, weapon size. Now, there's also waiting for the monkey, uh, you know, the monkey bomb. And it's basically stating that uh, the round number is 
big time in effect for the monkey. There's not too much on it that would be very useful. Now the Tesla gun. Now this function was actually removed, but I thought it would be interesting. Now for those of you that don't know anything about the custom zombie mapping or the weapon names, the Tesla gun is basically the Wonder Waff. Uh, it's that base, that wonderful electric gun that everybody wants and uh, that you can kill yourself with if you're not careful. But this function was very interesting because I found this in uh, Nazi Zombie Sumpath, which is based, uh, that's the... Shino Numa, I believe, is the, the name of the map. It's the Swamp map, anyway. It's been a while since I played World of War. But it's basically saying, now, in this function that they were originally going to do, you would not be able to get this below round 5. You would have to be on a round that is either 5 or higher to be able to even add this box into the gun. Or the, the gun into the box. So... Yeah, they removed this function, obviously, because now you can get it before round five. But this was just kind of interesting, as I thought um, I'd add it in there, as it's something that they were kind of discussing about um, in the development. So yeah, that was my basic little uh, behind-the-scenes look on Call of Duty World at War with the code. You can go ahead and do this if you have a Steam version or even um, some other, like a disc version or whatever of Call of Duty World at War. You can go ahead and find this in your Maps folder, um, in your er, raw Maps and uh, you can take a look at some of these these codes, and they're very interesting, and they're interesting to know for gamers as well, even if you're not a programmer, but it's always fun to look at the thinking process behind the developers in a game. I hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown. Uh, if you did, please don't forget to give it a like below. Comment any questions or maybe some comments you had on uh, some of the code in here, and uh yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to do on Mondays now. I'm going to do like a breakdown of what's happening behind the scenes in different video games. And if you have a custom request, you can also put that down in the comments. And I will see you guys later.